Hey everybody, we spend most of our time on YouTube talking about the stocks that we are buying, stocks that are on our watch list, uh, looking at earnings, things like that. Today, Tyler and I are going to talk about stocks that we sold. Um, we're generally buy and hold investors, um, but we don't commit to holding our stocks forever. We sell stocks occasionally and for a variety of reasons. Um, we both sold a major holding in our portfolios recently. I don't know how major Tyler is, but mine was definitely a major component of my portfolio. Um, before we dive in, please take a minute and check out the link you see on your screen, fool.com slash Frankel. It's the best way to support what we're doing on YouTube, and you can get the, the top 10 stocks from The Motley Fool right now. Again, fool.com slash Frankel. So I'll talk about mine in a second. It's one that I've talked about positively many times, and I still kind of like the business. Uh, but Tyler, what did you sell recently and why? Well, it's funny. From a business perspective, there's actually a few businesses that I enjoy and respect more than A.O. Smith, which is a hot water heater manufacturer. But um, I actually sold it, and uh, I'm going to get into why. Here's the reason why I like the business and why I would probably revisit it in the future. Uh, it, it, Like I said, manufacturing water heaters, commercial boilers, basically anything like that. And the business itself is incredibly solid because uh, typically this business is all about replacements. So if your water heater blows in your house or a commercial boiler in a, in a industrial, in a commercial facility or something like that goes out, you're pretty much replacing it on the spot. And that's more than 85% of AO Smith's business in North America. It's extremely steady. It's a, it's a strong cash engine, decent margins and you know, it's just one of those things that is durable through the economic cycles because like, look, it doesn't matter if you're in a recession or if in good times, <laughs> your water heater blows, you're going to get a new one. So uh, despite the, the the nice things I've said about it, the reason that I, I have decided to sell is because uh, throughout the 2010s, it made aggressive pushes into international markets, especially China. And that was a, a very, very strong tailwind for the business in terms of revenue growth. It wasn't as strong of a margin business, but the revenue on it was strong enough that you know it, it was it, it was much more than what you were getting in the North America business, which was you know stable, wax and wane a little bit with new construction, but you know nothing that's going to you know knock your socks off. So, what has happened in the past couple of years, though, is this: I, I, I it, it appears that the international China business has gone from a significant tailwind to looking like it's either going to be a neutral to a potential headwind. Uh, Chinese construction has gone down significantly. So, uh, you know, new construction, new installation has gone significantly down. One of the things on top of that that I, I've noted in its, its uh, investor presentations is for the longest time, it was showing all the market share gains. It was getting in China, basically showing like we went from basically nothing to almost 20, 25% of market share, but then they stopped giving market share presentations. And so part of me has wondered, like, have we seen a decline in market share? Is it losing ground comparative to what it was? It's, it's kind of one of those, like, you know, throwing off a little bit of a, a yellow flag, be like, Hey, you know, this used to be a strength, but you're not even telling us about it anymore. Is there something wrong? And uh, uh, it, uh, in addition to that, this is a business that, you know, it was typically you, you, uh, a low dividend yield somewhere in the 1.5 to 2% range. Nothing that really killed you, uh, you know, was going to knock your socks off, but it was typically growing at better than double digits, you know, 10, 12% every year. But over the past three years or so, it's it, that growth rate has declined precipitously and it's down to around 6% today. And seeing the, the rapid slowdown in uh, dividend growth, it's, buy, it's a rate of buybacks is slowing down a little bit. It, it's kind of a little quieter about its business in China. I, I think that there's enough uh, issues with the business that I wanted to step away for a while and see what happens here rather than uh, hold through what could be a challenging problem. And the reason I did this largely is because I was an owner of Estee Lauder, which 
kind of had a similar problem where it went all in on China, which was great for many, many years. It was it, it became like this, it, it, you know, a, a, a wonder for the business. But then when the the Chinese economy started to tank, uh, things really went out of hand pretty fast for Estee Lauder, and they've had to do significant restructuring as a result. And uh, maybe I'm being overly spooked, but. Uh, I, I think the returns on it have been sufficient enough, and uh, I, I've been tentative enough with my view towards investing in, you know, Chinese consumer products that I, I kind of wanted to step away from this one. Yeah, I like that. My my sell is a little more boring in in terms of the reasons why I sold. Um, the stock I sold recently was Wells Fargo. Um, I've talked very favorably about the business before, and I still mostly feel that way. Um, I feel like the new management's done a great job of moving the bank past its the scandals of the mid 2010s, um, and for me, it was more of a repositioning play. Um, and what I mean by that is, so just a quick background: Wells Fargo. It was a a COVID era purchase for me. Um, I got in shortly after the the pandemic started, the initial crash, and I bought the stock for about twenty three dollars a share. After the recent uh, election results, it spiked above seventy dollars, and I decided that I had too much banking exposure more. I mean, the banking industry has performed very, very well recently. Um, I own shares of Bank of America, which is my number one bank stock position and has been since, you know, 2014. Um, Ally Financial, Capital One, and SoFi. And between all those, banks were getting well over 20% of my portfolio, and it was just too much for comfort. Um, Wells Fargo, I never intended it to be a big position, but it had tripled since I bought it, and it was. Um, and I, the easiest way to say it in plain English is that I like Wells Fargo's business, just not as much as the other ones I own right now. Um, as Tyler and I talked about a little bit before the show, um, they still have that Federal Reserve asset cap hanging over them. Um, you know, this was a big obstacle in you know the first Trump administration, actually, when it was arguably the best time in our in recent history for banks to grow, and they weren't allowed to grow, and and. I've kind of seen that, like we've seen this movie before, kind of, a, and you know, Bank of America is in a great position to grow. Wells Fargo would be if the Fed would let them. Um, and so, of the two, it, it's to me a no-brainer, especially at comparable valuations uh, on a price-to-book basis. Um, so I got rid of them. I'm sticking with Bank of America. They, I, it's still my favorite bank stock by far. It's my position is probably as large as the other three that I own combined. Um, their recent quarter looked great. Um, their loan loss provision is better than, or I'm sorry, their their losses are better than expected. Um, you know, it it looks like their net interest income is gonna is starting to turn a corner and could really turn a corner if rate if uh, the Fed keeps lowering rates. And their investment banking business is doing great. Um, another another big one I own that I haven't talked about recently in a video is Ally Financial. They're an auto lender primarily, but there's a lot to like about the business, especially from from a valuation standpoint. Um, just their net interest margin is so high that they could afford to, even if you know the market turned and their default their delinquency rate went up by two or three percent this would still be a highly profitable business um i just think that there's a lot more to like about the other banks in my portfolio um so if i needed to get rid of one it was wells fargo and that's what i did i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video the motley fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels you all know how much i love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment so i'm proud to partner with the motley fool to bring you 10 stock picks from the popular product stock advisor stock advisor has beaten the market by nearly five times so go to fool.com slash frankel to get your 10 stock picks now the Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 767 percent as of July 5th, 2024, and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 163 percent as of July 5th, 2024.